just heard uh, from Paul Churchill that he does expect the dollar to continue to weaken into Christmas from uh, against the euro. Uh, do, you, do you think that momentum will impact any other asset classes? Well, I'll tell you, take a look at the precious metals that have taken off to the upside on the back of this this dollar drop, uh, we're coming into a cyclical bottom for gold and it rises going into December, January, so that might be the reverse of the dollar fall. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S. and uh, Mexico. If you Google it, you'll find out all about it. Well, you could tell us a little bit more right now. You always hear it on CNBC. <laughs> the Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU. And uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. Um, you really think that will get any, any leeway? Uh, you may want to visit a couple of websites and see how far along it is. The Canadians are pretty upset about it, whereas the Americans, apart from the Texans, um, are the only people who know anything about it. The, the rest of the public's really um, sort of with their head in the sand on this one. Turns tonight about moves towards what some call a North American Union. A number of high-level government meetings are taking place in Mexico to discuss North American integration of Mexico, the United States, and Canada. More meetings are scheduled. It is an aggressive agenda proposed at the highest levels of our government and U.S. commerce without congressional or voter oversight. Lisa Sylvester reports. A caravan of cars travels along the Arizona desert. Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff was visiting the U.S.-Mexican border. Last week he was in Mexico City. Commerce Secretary Carlos Gutierrez visited Mexico February 1st. Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez, January 11th, and President Bush himself will travel there next month. The high-level meetings are to advance North American integration, also known as the Security Prosperity Partnership. There are several ways it could go. One is modeled after the EU. One is modeled after sort of the, uh, an economic community. It's beyond the scope of, of just a trade free trade zone, which we fairly well have already with those two countries. This partnership is being driven by the U.S. business community, which envisions ships from China docking in Mexico instead of California. Mexican truck drivers transporting cargo on a NAFTA superhighway all the way to Canada. A cornerstone of this model is a guest worker immigration program that relaxes U.S. borders. Critics say the plan would greatly benefit Mexico, but could mean the loss of American jobs and an increase in social costs to U.S. taxpayers. The reality is that last year they came close to passing a bill which would have allowed uh, close to 100 million immigrants into the country, most of them low-skilled over the next 20 years. That will, in fact, bankrupt the United States. Those concerned with integrating the economies point to the disparities. The U.S. GDP per capita is $43,500. Canada, $35,200. Mexico, only $10,600. The average adult in the United States has 12 years of education. In Canada, 11 and a half years. Mexico, only a little over seven years of schooling. And this Friday, another round of top-level meetings in Canada. Secretary Michael Chertoff, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, and Commerce Secretary Carlos Gutierrez will be meeting with their Canadian and Mexican counterparts. Now, the press releases say the focus will be on providing for the free flow of trade, helping secure borders, and keeping the U.S. competitive. But, Lou, really what they're talking about is this new economic integration. Lou? And uh, Congress is sitting uh, basically on its hands, saying nothing. Uh, uh, hearing nothing, apparently, as we continue to report on this outright, uh, outrageous conduct. And it is even possible that Congress may not even have a say. What we are hearing is that the Bush administration is trying to use NAFTA as the justification for doing a lot of nearly two years since the Real ID Act became law. Passed in response to the September 11th terrorist attack, this law requires all states to adhere to a national standard for driver's licenses. Applicants, among other things, must prove their identity before receiving a license. Now, two years later, however, dozens of states are fighting back, saying the Real ID Act is too costly and is a threat to our civil liberties. Bill Tucker has our report. When it comes to the Real ID Act, many states can't. 
or won't meet the new deadline of December 31st, 2009. The act is a fundamentally simple idea that all applicants must prove their identity before they're issued driver's licenses. But there are currently bills pending in 25 states that are aimed at either outright repealing the Real ID Act or raising concerns about it as tracked by the National Conference of State Legislatures. That's because, they say, Real ID is a simple idea with a complex reality. Under Real ID, all 50 states will have to change their systems. There is no state that is in compliance today. So this is going to affect everybody. We've got 245 million driver's license holders who, under the regulations, are going to have to come back in in person over the next five years. Real ID, the governors say, requires electronic verification in that of the five systems required under federal regulations, only one exists today. So, the states say, they are not even close to being ready to comply. And the Governor's Association insists that it understands the importance of compliance is underlined by the 9-11 Commission. Real ID is a 9-11 Commission recommendation for a reason, and it's a good thing for our national security, our economic security, and our public safety. All Americans are better off if their identities are... For over 50 years, the Bilderberg Group constructed the European Union by stealth under the guise of trade deals. Now the elite are using the same secretive program to complete the North American Union. But this time, superstate integration is on the extreme fast track. International agreements like NAFTA, GATT, and APEC were just stepping stones in the formation of the NAU. The North American Union was officially born at Baylor University in Waco, Texas on March 23, 2005. The leaders of the United States, Mexico and Canada told the press that they were only meeting to discuss trade. It soon leaked that a secret meeting had been held during the Security and Prosperity Trilateral Summit. The three governments had refused to release the secret agreement to the people. In September of 2006, their treasonous operation was blown wide open. From September 12th to September 14th in Banff, Canada, hundreds of elected and appointed government leaders from Canada, Mexico, and the United States met in secret. On the last day of the conference, someone inside the secret North American Union forum leaked the agenda. The front pages of newspapers across Canada carried the story. The Judicial Watch Foundation submitted Freedom of Information Act requests to obtain the full agenda and minutes of the secret assembly. Many federal agencies refused, citing national security. The foundation finally succeeded and did receive thousands of pages of documents. The documents marked unclassified are the blueprints of a shadow government ruling by bureaucratic and executive fiat. The pages chronicle an already operating North American Union. Transportation, law enforcement, agriculture, regulation, banking, manufacturing, construction, education, immigration, and even the military are being merged with no input from the people or their elected representatives in Congress and Parliament. One of the first items on their agenda was to stress how important it was that their plan, quote, be carried out by stealth. The controllers also talked about exploiting the public's fears of climate change to push a continent-wide tax to fund the new government. Globalist tool Robert Pasture is incessantly paraded on the world stage as the man behind the North American merger. When he testified before Congress, he pushed the idea of a continental security perimeter that erases national boundaries and merges the security apparatus. The best way to secure the United States today is not at our two borders with Mexico and Canada, but at the borders of North America as a whole. In fact, the North American Command, based in Colorado Springs, Colorado, was clearly running the meeting in Canada. For the past decade, the Pentagon has been training with Mexican and Canadian forces and has openly discussed using them inside the United States for disasters and to quell domestic unrest. There are already over 100,000 non-U.S. citizens serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. The Pentagon is now expanding its recruiting centers in Mexico, the Philippines, and Eastern